hydrogen is being promoted as a green gas and as a way of fueling our economic recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. We are told that it is good both for the environment and our economy. However, key questions remain. Is hydrogen really a green gas? And who is promoting hydrogen so strongly and why? We speak to two experts to tell us why. Tom, could you begin by telling us how hydrogen is produced? Is it really a green gas? Well, th there are three ways to produce hydrogen um, and they're labelled um, grey, blue and green. Now, grey hydrogen and currently 96% of hydrogen produced this way is from fossil fuels. That process produces carbon dioxide, approximately nine tonnes of carbon dioxide for every tonne of hydrogen. The world needs hydrogen, particularly for fertiliser production. So our first net zero action should be to decarbonise current grey hydrogen production. Moving on from grey hydrogen to blue hydrogen, blue hydrogen is essentially grey hydrogen uh, produced from fossil gas, but around 90% of the emissions are captured and stored. So it is not net zero emissions, but it's clearly an improvement over grey hydrogen. Also, the carbon capture process associated with blue hydrogen is expensive and will increase the cost of hydrogen. Lastly, green hydrogen. This is hydrogen produced from renewable electricity. This can truly be described as green, but at the moment it's very expensive and not commercially attractive compared to blue hydrogen. A very small percentage of hydrogen is produced this way, but to scale it up, we would need a massive expansion of renewable energy and a significant, significant reduction in production costs. So do you think any of these forms of hydrogen could help us get to net zero? Blue and green hydrogen will help deliver net zero, but the question is, are there better, more sustainable options for achieving net zero? And my concern is that hydrogen is being pushed by influential lobbying groups who have business models that will benefit from hydrogen. Well, if business will benefit from hydrogen, I don't think the taxpayer will benefit and there's better ways to get to net zero. Thank you so much. I'm now going to bring in Simon Perani. Um, Simon is an energy researcher and historian. Simon, what sort of projects are the government funding and will they help us to decarbonise? Well, the largest project that's currently under discussion is the H21 project in uh, Yorkshire and this is to switch the natural gas grid to hydrogen and supply hydrogen to 3.7 million homes and businesses uh, for heating and cooking and this is supposed to be done by 2035 but a much much more logical approach would be to insulate these homes to reduce the overall need for heat and install heat pumps and research by the government's own climate change committee as well as in universities has shown time and time again that insulation and heat pumps are a quicker and cheaper way to decarbonize homes and what's happened in yorkshire is that trade unionists in the leeds trade union council have started a campaign uh, to lobby in favor of that approach retrofitting and heat pumps using local labor uh, that could be employed for a truly uh, decarbonizing initiative but they keep coming up against this push from the oil and gas companies to use hydrogen instead. Simon who is behind the promotion of hydrogen technology and how have they managed to convince the government and regional authorities that this is the best option for getting us to net zero? It's the oil and gas companies that are pushing hard for this um, and it's a survival strategy for them. So on a European level, uh, in 2017, some of the largest fossil fuel companies, Shell, BP, Angie and others, set up a body, the Hydrogen Council. They've got a very efficient PR company, FTI, which is lobbying uh, European officials at many levels and promoting hydrogen as a supposedly green uh, energy solution. Similarly, in the UK, the all-party parliamentary group on hydrogen uh, is sponsored by uh, fossil fuel companies, uh, gas network providers and gas boiler uh, manufacturers. And in fact, the government's Hydrogen Advisory Council is co-chaired by the Secretary of State for Business and, on the other hand, the head of Shell UK. 
So it's very clear that the push is coming from uh, the, com the oil and gas companies that work on the North Sea. But why are the fossil fuel companies um, so keen on hydrogen? Surely, if it was produced using renewable energy, that wouldn't benefit them. So, first of all, if hydrogen was produced from uh, renewable energy, you're right, it would not benefit the oil and gas companies. It would also be extremely uh, expensive and have a very great energy cost, uh, as Tom has described. What I think the fossil fuel companies are banking on is that the other route will be taken, that is to extract the hydrogen from natural gas. Um, they'll then have the issue of capturing and storing uh, the carbon dioxide, which uh, is produced uh, during the extraction of the hydrogen, um, but they will stay in business. It's a survival strategy for them and it prolongs their business at a time when, because of climate change, there has to be an end point uh, for oil and gas. It sounds like we are being encouraged to go down a path that is definitely not the best way to get to net zero by some pretty strong vested interests. What can we do to try and stop this from happening? What we need is hydrogen sat beside the other routes to net zero, one being electrification. The, the, we then have two pathways that we can compare, and we compare those cast pathways on the principles of sustainability against people, profit, and planet. We lay out the evidence of the two routes and then make a decision. At the moment, that comparative assessment is missing, and that, that would seem like an absolute must to have if the UK is going to set out its strategy and pathway. How, how do the other strategies compare with hydrogen. Thanks, Tom. And Simon? First of all, uh, we should all uh, get our heads around this. We should all familiarise ourselves with what the options are. Uh, they're not too complicated for all of us to understand. Um, we should ask ourselves how we want to uh, see electricity produced, how we want to heat our homes and uh, get the other uh, energy sources that we need. And we should do what the Leeds Trade Union Council have done. Be active locally, uh, interact with councillors, with the government, with companies, uh, ask whether we want to convert uh, the gas network to hydrogen at all. And uh, make this something about how we live our lives and not about what suits uh, the companies that are pushing uh, a particular technology.